Hello, beautiful people from here, from there, and from everywhere. This is Ilesama. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I would like to say also thank you very much to all of you, my subscribers, and to those of you who are not subscribers, but maybe at this moment you are watching this video. Thank you very much because you are taking some time for it. And also, if you are able to subscribe, or if you want to subscribe, that will be wonderful. I hope this video inspires you to create those things that for one reason or other you haven't had the chance. But today is the day, no other day. So let's create, let's be safe, let's be healthy, let's be inspired, let's be love and love, and let's be united. Today is the day. Let's go and create. Ready to work with this project? Well, as you can see, we are working with puzzles, puzzles, puzzles. What are the elements, materials, or tools that we are going to need for this project? Very simple, very easy. Our glue, our puncher, leather punch, our puzzles, scissors, and of course, a ribbon or trim or jaguar paper probably is possible to use or anything or any very thin slim material that you think could go through the small hole in our puzzle and from there just scratch and you will know for sure i'm sure you probably already have figured out how it's done you don't need to to keep watching however i appreciate that you are here and let's go to our today um quote and to our a small hero tales from american life a book written by francis trebellion miller Quote of the day, adversity is like the period of the former and of the latter reign. Cold, comfortless, unfriendly to man and to animal. Yet from that season have their birth the flower and the fruit, the date, the roast and the pomegranate. Walter Scott. The tale of the first American fleet to challenge the seas. It was in the year of 1779, during the Revolutionary War. The colonists had met with varying success of land, sometimes driving the English and other road, oftentimes themselves driving headlong from the battlefield. On the seas, the poor little American privateers, schooners and merchant ships, in fact, anything that would float and carry a crew and a few small canyon, contested with the larger ships of the powerful King's Navy. And through the bravery of commander and crew, bore of many of the British ships as prizes. It was the 23rd of September, a squadron of five small American vessels were cruising off the coast of England under the flagship Bohemi Richard, as all East Indiaman merchant ship, long since condemned as unworthy. The ship had been sold to be broken up. The Americans had obtained her, and after patching up her rotten hold, mounted forty guns and set her afloat as a ship of war. In the Baltic sick, the daring commander of the American ships spy a fleet of British merchantmen, conveyed by the two new frigates, the Scrappies and the Countess of Scarborough. Sails were set and American ships filled away towards the English vessels. 
It was half past seven in the evening. The Bohemian Richard drew within range. Dusk was settling over the water. The American sailors, stationed at the guns behind the high bulwarks, and imbued with the enthusiasm and energy of their intrepid commander, eagerly awaited the order to fire. The British sailor more were just as anxious for the freight, believing that the worthless American ships would be easy prey for their fine frigates. A flash of flame, followed by a crash, and an English broadside had opened the battle. Broadside after broadside shattered the peaceful quiet of the autumn night. Three of the American ships held off and did not take part in the battle, leaving the brave commander with his rotten ships and one other little vessel equally unfit to bear the brown of the fearful fight of the powerful British vessels. At almost the first broadside, the Bohemian Richard's 18 pounders burst, splitting dead and destruction around them. Gun after gun blew up, doing more damage to the Americans than the English shell grow. With her guns crippled, unable to respond with effect to the storm of British shot, the brave captain realized that his only hope of victory was to close in on the scrappies and grapple hand to hand with cutlass and pistol. Up in the region of the Bohemian Richards were agile sailors, and when the two ships came together with a rasping crash, they threw their grasping irons into the British ships, ringing and lashed the two vessels together. Instantly, a line of furious Americans led by their bounty captain scramble on the decks of the English ship and a fearful struggle followed with pike, cutlass and pistol. The English commander relied his men. With a cheer, he drove the boarders back onto the deck of the sinking, shot, red laid Bahamut Richards. The American ship was now in a fearful condition. Her rigging was hanging in bits and her hull was a pulp. Water was pouring and through her washes, floating in lower decks. The American flag had been shot away, but the British colors were still flying. The British captain hailed the American captain. Have you struck your colors? he asked. I have not begun to fight, was the defiant reply of the brave American. And with the renewed courage, the American sailors swept over the side of the scrappies rushing the British along the deck, stumbling, resisting every inch down the hatchway. The words of the brave commander will ever thrill the American, as they thrilled and inspired the almost defeated American sailors in that memorable moment and sent them on the victory. The English, disertained by the heroic and downless spirit of their enemies, with aging our heart, hearts, were forced to pull down the king's flag and surrender. The havoc growth in the action was fearful. The English decks were littered with the bodies of the dead and wounded. Mohammed Richards was shot to pieces. The ringing was a mass of wreckage. Her hull was riddled with a surf. Her torn and washed decks were so quickly strewn with bodies and wreckages that it was with difficulty that the sailors could find a place to walk. The American ship was wallowing about in the waves as the wall poured through the holes in her sides. The captain ordered that all the wounded and prisoners be transferred to the captured English ship. When all were on board, he sailed for Holland with his prisoners, while his own ship filled it with water and sand to the bottom of the sea. It was some years later that the captain, who had lost his ship and won a victory, passed away in poverty in France. More than a century later, grateful citizens of the United States placed his remains on board a modern warship and covered with them to the United States, where with great military pomp they were interred in the National Cemetery. 
that was tardy honor paid to the memory of the great naval hero who, when his ship was sinking had just begun to fight. John Paul Jones. All honor to our flag for which our fathers fought and died on many a blood-stained battlefield, on many a gory sea. The flag has triumphed, even more triumphant may it be. And since again, mid shot and shell its faults must be inferior. God grant that we may keep unstained before the world. All hold the flag we love, made it victorious ever fly and hats off along the line when freedom's flag goes by. Bueno, aquí estamos nuevamente en esta ocasión con la intención de mostrarles otra forma de adornar nuestros pequeños rompecabezas en esta serie de rompecabezas, rompecabezas, rompecabezas. Bueno, en realidad así son las piezas. Afortunadamente no nos vamos a romper la cabeza para poder realizarlas, puesto que no necesitamos demasiados materiales o elementos. En realidad, como ustedes pueden ver, lo único que necesitamos son nuestros rompecabezas, pegamento, troqueladora para cortar piel, en este caso cortarlos o hacer las perforaciones en nuestros rompecabezas, tijeras y además listón o podrían ser tiritas de tela, quizá incluso papel, o encajes, en fin, la versatilidad es del infinito y cada quien puede realizar con estos una serie de cambios para poder crear nuestros rompecabezas con otro, de otra forma, con otro estilo diferente al que ustedes están viendo en sus pantallas. Una vez juntos todos estos elementos, materiales o herramientas, a realizarlos se ha dicho. Así que espero que disfruten este video y que puedan realizar este pequeño adorno con el cual ustedes pueden eh, embellecer su libro, cuaderno, libreta, eh, diario o utilizarlos, como les había dicho, quizá incluso eh, como separadores de libros. En fin, la imaginación, la creatividad y el uso es infinito. En esta ocasión les presento una poesía que escribí ahí por el 2015 y que se llama La niña quiso ser. Esta es la versión corta, puesto que la versión larga la tengo en alguno de mis videos aquí mismo en este canal y con imágenes y fotografías que he sacado yo. Así que espero que les guste esta poesía que es la versión corta. La niña quiso ser. La niña quiso ser mariposa. Extendió los brazos al aire. En el jardín se puso a volar. Un viento fuerte la zarandeó. Mariposa ya no quiso ser. La niña quiso ser árbol. Plantó sus pies en el suelo. Subió sus brazos al aire. Ya soy árbol, pajaritos. Vengan aquí a trinar. Un velo oscuro llegó. Empezó a anochecer. Árbol ya no quiso ser. La niña quiso ser nube. El firmamento cruzar. Bailar en lo alto, en el cielo, para estrellas recoger. Las nubes se oscurecieron. Comenzó a llover. Nube ya no quiso ser. La niña quiso ser mujer. Vistió ropas de su madre, lápiz labial, bolsa de mano, tacones altos y al caminar sus piecitos se movían por doquier. Mujer adulta ya no quiso ser. Ya no quería crecer la niña. El tiempo siguió su curso y creció la niña en él. Un día regresó a su escuelita de niña ya siendo toda una mujer. Ahí quiso volver a ser niña, pero el tiempo no puedes retroceder. Autora 
VLDH y les ama. Mayo 19, 2020, poesía que escribí ahí por el 15, 16 de octubre del 2015. Con amor y les ama.